to my channel. My name is Jamie and in today's video, we're going to talk about school. A lot of times when I don't get to post a YouTube video, I always tell you guys that it's because I'm very busy with my masters. And when I say very busy, it's just because I have very poor time management skills. And since we're going to talk about my school today and all the technicalities about it, I thought that maybe it would be fitting for me to wear my school lanyard. Para naman feel na feel ko talaga siya, di ba? When I think about it now, magto two years na pala ako since I started my masters and the first time I ever talked about it was when I did a what's in my school bag video. Since then, I've been getting questions here and there about my school, what school do I go to, what subjects I'm taking, how did I get into Ateneo, and things like that. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about my MBA or master school experience so far. Without further ado, let's get started. So like the type 6 that I am, I made a list of topics that I will talk about because I tend to ramble on. And when I'm editing, I start to hate myself for saying so much na hindi naman nagme make no sense. The first thing, the most important thing, where do I study? So if you guys can see my lanyard, I actually study at the Ateneo Professional Schools and this school is located in Rockwell, Makati. I believe that they also have a branch in Salcedo Village and they also have one in Cebu. Kasi ang alam ko, one of my profs would go there every weekend just to teach a class. Iba, diba? Second thing is, what am I taking? So I'm taking the Masters in Business and I took the Standard Program because you can opt to choose the entrepreneurship program or the middle managers program so they also have this thing called Regis which is if you're already like at the higher tier of your company like if you're a CEO or like getting there then that's most ideal for you but since I have no background whatsoever in business I decided to start from the very bottom being in the standard program doesn't make you at the bottom but it provides all the necessary or the basic skills that you need to accelerate in your career. But more on that later. From what I know, the Ateneo Professional Schools also offers Masters in Public Health and they also share the same school as Ateneo Law School. So like I said earlier, I took the standard program just because I feel like I need the basic skills to actually, you know, understand what I'm getting myself into because I I'm not a business graduate. Like, I did not graduate with the degree of business communications or business administration or business management. I think I mentioned it once that I used to be a kindergarten teacher. So I was actually teaching the nursery level for three years before I officially resigned and decided to like study again and pursue something else. So my undergrad degree was actually education and I specialized in early childhood education. And I took this at the University of Asia and the Pacific in Ortigas. So if you haven't really noticed the trend yet, I really love small schools. I've never really imagined myself in big schools like UP or Ateneo and Katipunan, but I've always loved the idea of being an Ateneo. Not to say that I don't love my alma mater in Ortigas, I, I really do, but Ateneo has just been always my dream. But your girl wasn't that smart when she was a teenager. So if you guys are looking into taking up an MBA as well in Ateneo, I can give you guys like the basics of how I applied. Basically, everything is done online. If I remember correctly, because this was like two years ago, so and everything happened so fast, sa totoo lang. So I didn't expect to get in. Honestly, so the first few things that you're gonna need are the documentation such as I think your birth certificate if I'm not mistaken and You need also your transcript from your last school So the funny thing is I actually went to UANB to get my transcript only to find out that they were already So Miriam in Katipunan because I took a semester or two semesters in Miriam Taking a master's in special ed and then I decided to quit altogether because I felt like Ayoko na yata mag -edok. So I had to go back and forth or Tigas, Katipunan, and then to Makati, and then back na naman to Katipunan just because of so many concerns about the documentation, about my transcript of records. So I highly recommend na alam niyo muna ko saan yung last school nyo. I mean, where? I mean, if you were like me, and if you were like jumping from one school to another at some point in your life, not sure if you should take masters, then try to think really hard where you last submitted your transcript. So transcript of records and 
and you basically need to fill up the application form online. The entire application process is paperless. You just need to fill up the application login online. So you have to create like an account on their website and that's it. You just fill it out. You also need to answer like a few essay questions there because that's basically how the school gets to know you and what are your goals for achieving masters and just so they get to see like a little bit more of your personality and what drives you to take up MBA. The most crucial part of the application process of course is the entrance exam. Every graduate student has to take the GMAT and I was fortunate enough that Ateneo was already offering it for us so I don't have to go somewhere else like a testing center just to take the GMAT exam. There are some schools that don't offer that I'm not sure lang now which ones but as of the date I think most of the MBA schools in the Philippines already offer the GMAT in their school that's super convenient I also took the GMAT exam when I was applying to AIM or Asian Institute of Management which is another school that I was looking into it took me I think <sighs> Three months, I think, because this was so long ago already, to find out that I got in the school. And I found out via email that I would be entering in the third trimester. So that was basically it. So there are also other schools that you can try if you want to explore more of your options when taking MBA. My first option was actually Asian Institute of Management. People say it's like the Harvard Business School of Asia. And I also got into that school, fortunately. However, hindi kinaya ng puso ko yung tuition fee nila. It is a very famous and world-renowned school. Standards are really, really good. I took a demo class there and I really enjoyed it. However, I really could not afford the tuition fee. So my second option was really Ateneo where my heart is as well. And the third school that I applied for was De La Salle. That third one, I don't think I actually pushed through anymore. I think I fulfilled all the application forms and everything. But when I was about to submit na, I think I drew back just because sabi ko, well, if it's not Ateneo, then I'm not going. I'm not taking MBA. I think that's how much I really, really wanted to either take AIM or just Ateneo. And thank God I got in. <laughs> Another very, very common question that I get is what the heck do I get out of MBA in the first place? Whenever I talk to my classmates asking like, why are you taking MBA? Um, what are you here for? What's your like main goal after you graduate? The number one reason that you guys will hear, and this is not necessarily a bad thing, okay? People take MBA to build connections. It's all about networking. And although some people might think, wow, it's such an expensive way to make connections, that's the reality of it. Like even when I was just researching about the possibility of getting an MBA, I wanted to know the pros and cons because definitely I will be spending my money on it and I wanted to know is it gonna be worth it? Is this gonna have like an impact on my life after I graduate? And really the number one thing that people say it's all about connections. Second thing you can get from MBA is if you're not a business graduate like me, you're actually gonna learn like so 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 much. Like you will start to appreciate a lot of the things in society, in business, if you're able for the corporate world. Nowadays, digital marketing and e-commerce is so popular and that's probably like where everything will go anyway in the next 10 to 20 years. Business school is going to offer you a lot of like solid foundation when it comes to businesses and they also teach courses that keep up with the trends right now. The third reason, and this is probably like the funniest but sincerely the truest reason why a lot of people take MBA. A lot, if not most people in their 20s take up an MBA because of their quarter-life crisis. I mean, I can't really generalize what people's reasons are for quarter-life crisis. I probably had like a bit of that reason when I experienced quarter-life crisis. I, but I think like people really want to explore what's out there for them. And at the same time, they do want to keep like, I don't know, they want a sense of stability the same way that they felt like they were in college. They want a community and they also want to have like that backup credential wherever they're going to head in the next 10 or 20 years. Having an MBA is pretty much always like future forward. Like you always think about like what's good for you in the next 10 years, 20 years because this is really gonna make a big impact in your career. Which brings me to the next thing. Is it guaranteed that if you take an MBA, you will have lots of money or a stable career? Will you be a CEO in the future? That is the biggest misconception about taking an MBA. And it's all because Shempe sari ling diskate monayan. Having the MBA degree is like a toolbox that will provide you all the things that you need 
to act accordingly in your company or wherever you are to build a business to and try to apply for being a manager things like that so it equips you with the knowledge and competency to head towards that direction but how you actually use these tools and apply it it's all up to you i mean it's just like anything in life people who graduate from college are pretty much the same thing so how many classes do you need to take so you have a total of 20 classes that you need to take and you can actually finish them within five years that's the amount of residency time that they will give you the ideal pace of an mba student is you're supposed to finish within two to three years but in my case since i took an loa i predict that i'm probably going to finish in three or three and a half years some of my friends are actually on their way to finishing the two and two and a half years just because they're taking three subjects in one sem I did that last term and dude, I died. <laughs> I super died and I wasn't even taking any math subject that time. I don't know how these people do it, honestly. When I think about it now, I always told myself that it's gonna be so easy to take like three subjects because when I was in college, UANP probably has like the highest number of units compared to other universities. Like every semester, I think we would have a maximum of 28 units that we can take. And for me, I thought that okay just taking like six or nine units a semester would be so effing easy nakakayanin ko siya even while working but boy was i wrong super wrong so so far i've already taken seven subjects and finished all of my pre-mba so now i'm going to focus on my core subjects when i'm done with my core subjects the last one is called strama which if you ask any mba student like no matter what school they're in if you mention strama that's like the end goal talaga when you finish strama then you graduate finally so since i was taking like way too much last semester i told myself that i'm never ever going to put myself in that position ever again so i've decided to only take two subjects and probably like one lang if math is involved. If I take two subjects per semester, I will finish in three and a half years. And if I take three, I would probably finish in three. So kundi na naman yung difference, but still for me, you know, time is of the essence. So I would rather finish a lot earlier if I could, but hindi ko talaga mapipilit kung hindi kaya because I really value my mental health above a lot of things. So those are basically all the technicalities of my school and pursuing MBA. So if you guys were wondering about it, then that's pretty much it. But I do want to talk about now about, I mean, why I think it's worth it that you should pursue masters if not MBA. Like just the idea of masters and some of the lessons that I've learned in my school so far. So when I was still an undergrad in UAN we actually have this wonderful thing called the five-year program. So basically, you take the standard of four years of education and just one year of master's. Five years, dalawa na yung diploma mo. You have the bachelor's degree and the master's degree. Some of my friends who took the five-year program are not even in their 30s yet and they're already pursuing a PhD. Diba? Iba sila, diba? So it's kind of amazing and there's really some something na nakaka-proud when you are able to pursue those things at such a young age but even if you are already like a little bit older it's also fine it's just nice to pursue something like this while you're young and single and this is the only thing that you pretty much can focus on of course not saying that people who are married or who have kids and everything cannot do this as well there are a lot of people who do this as well but a lot of my professors and even my friends would say that this is really something worth pursuing and the most ideal to pursue when you're still in your early 20s some schools would ask you to have at least two years experience before you apply for their master's program. Like in my school, in Ateneo Professional Schools, you need two years of working experience, like any working experience, before you can apply for the MBA. But in UANP, you didn't really need that. Like right after your fourth year, diretso ka na fifth year. Now that I think about it, I really wish that I pursued a fifth year even though I'm not so into education right now. I mean, I think I'm at that point in my life where I'm still trying to figure out out, like what I'm really passionate about and like where I really want to see myself I mean I already have a pretty good idea of that right now but it's still nice to have a lot of options like if I do decide in the future to still pursue education or like build a school of my own or I don't know just teaching children because that that's something I really really love I love kids so much and I, I, I don't know I think I'm I think I'm pretty good at teaching so if that's something I still want to pursue in the future at least my master's degree will take me to greater heights 
nights. But I didn't do that. And when I tried to take it at Miriam, I quit after two semesters. So what I'm saying is, if you have the opportunity to take your master's, like right after graduating, your undergrad degree, go for it. But nonetheless, even if you have already graduated and you didn't pursue your master's yet, I want you to really think about, like, is this something that you can consider? Because I really think that education is something that you should invest in while you're young. So with that, I kind of want to end this video by sharing with you guys one of the things that I've learned in one of my favorite classes so far. And I want to summarize it in a quote that goes something like this. Character will still be caught even if it's not systematically taught. So every time I think about that quote, it reminds me to do good and meaningful work in every single thing I do, like whether it's YouTube or studying in school or with my family or with my work itself. If you want to be recognized as a good person or a good worker, you don't have to be like praised all the time. Just keep doing good every single day or like strive to do meaningful work every single day. Give 100% every single time. If it comes naturally for you to do 100% with your work and if your intentions are good all the time, then that's a true sign of your character. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! Down, yeah. I've been feeling so, I've been feeling so down, yeah. Can you tell me why? Can you tell me why? I'm down, yeah. No friends of mine, no friends of mine